For 20 years, Ron Tutton and Home Street Roofing have been providing Colorado residents what we all want for our homes, a quality roof. Not only quality new roofs, but roof repairs and the assurance that our homes are as well protected as our families within. Our homes are, most likely, the biggest purchase any of us will ever make, and Colorado weather can take its toll. So do what Mike did when he was in need of a new roof on his home. He called the roofing experts at Home Street Roofing. Owner Ron Tutton made an appointment and showed up when he said he would, gave Mike a fair and reasonable price, and told him what he could expect. He could expect the crew to show up on time when they were scheduled and would complete the work both quickly and on time and for the agreed-on price. Also, if your roof is weather-damaged, owner Ron Tutton is experienced with and has handled all sorts of insurance claims and is more than happy to help you through the process. Ron and Home Street have such a good reputation that when the building inspector came to inspect Mike's new roof, he remarked that he knows Home Street and the tremendous work they do. So give Home Street a call at 303-777-0333. That's 303-777-0333. And tell Ron you heard about it on the Mike Boyle Show. He'll do the same great job for you that he's been doing for satisfied customers for over 20 years. Summer's here, and that means beautiful Colorado weather, outdoor activities, and barbecues. Maybe settling in at home to watch a little Rockies baseball. And what a great time to enjoy an ice-cold Pepsi or an ice-cold Pepsi product like Diet Pepsi or Mountain Dew. Maybe a mug root beer or the new lemon-lime Miss Twist. But remember, Pepsi is more than just great sodas. Pepsi also puts out Lipton iced tea, Gatorade, and Aquafina bottled water. And you can enjoy Pepsi products at such wonderful local restaurants as Jersey Mike Subs, Old Chicago Pizzas and Tap Room, Lucha Mexican Cantinas in Littleton and Georgetown, The View House Restaurants in downtown Littleton and Centennial, Pegasus in Castle Rock, and many, many more. Pepsi is also the official beverage of the Mike Boyle Restaurant Show and will be featured at many of his lunch bunch and supper club events, all of which are listed on his website at MikeBoyle.com. So whether it's a bottle of Aquafina water, an iced tea by Lipton, or one of the many wonderful sodas offered by Pepsi, whichever one you choose, it's going to help make for a perfect summer pepsi you know any time of the year is a great time for a little drive up to the mountains but sometimes i-70 gets a little jammed up a little you say traffic construction well why not take the drive to the mountains by heading up highway 285 it will take you up past morrison tiny town turkey creek and right into aspen park and what's in aspen park you say well not much but there's a great place to stop and enjoy a big hearty wonderful breakfast or maybe if you get a late start a big hearty wonderful lunch the place is called dw's 285 diner and it's located in the king Super Shopping Center as you enter town. Independently owned and operated by Dennis White, that's what the DW stands for. Dennis has been in the restaurant business for years and knows what it takes to keep customers happy. Big meals, great food, good value, and a nice, friendly, welcoming atmosphere. So whether you start with a heaping platter of tamales and eggs for breakfast or a big, thick, juicy burger for lunch, DW's is going to make you happy. DW's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast and lunch, and is sure to give you the fuel you'll need for an enjoyable day in the Colorado Rockies. Pop open an ice-cold Pepsi while you enjoy more of the Mike Boyle Restaurant Show. All right, 1138, uh, we're back on the restaurant show. Um, a couple weeks ago, a lady participated, a listener participated in, uh, you know, one of these walking, running charity events. You go to Wash Park or you go to, uh, uh, you go out to Garden of the Gods uh, in Colorado Springs or something, and you participate in these events. And I, I certainly applaud it and I encourage it. You get a T-shirt, uh, you generally get a bag of a banana when it's over, and you do something nice for the community and you do something nice for yourself. Anyway, at the end of this event, uh, Sharon said that she was given some kombucha, K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A, and she said, what is it? And I said, well, I don't know definitionally what it is, but I know that uh, my daughter, who uh, she's not a maniac about this stuff, but she's very health conscious, and she uh, shares a lot of this stuff with me, and I Try to, in my advanced years, keep myself active and keep myself in reasonably good shape, eat well, sleep well, go easy on the cold Coors lights. But at any rate, uh, I said I'd find out a little bit more about it, and I had it on my to-do list. But when she and I were flying back from Banff, Canada, just a uh, week, 10 days ago or so, um, in the United Hemisphere magazine, there was an, it's actually an ad, East meets West, kombucha is top of mind as holistic health becomes mainstream. Over the past couple of years, kombucha has become synonymous with yoga pants, moon circles, and a plethora of other health and wellness trends. 
However, brin, uh, brewing kombucha is not so much a fad as it is an art form that has been touted for its healthy properties and health benefits since around 220 B.C. That's 220 before Christ. Originating in northeast China, Kombucha's consumption spread throughout Japan, Russia, and Eastern Europe for thousands of years. It didn't become available for consumption in the United States until the 1990s when the founder of uh, kombucha started homebrewing it, and then after seeing the benefits began sharing his kombucha by the bottle at a local Los Angeles health store. What are the health benefits of kombucha? We are in a time where the world, and by the way, you can get this stuff. They've got a big display. I know it's a Safeway in Castle Rock. It's just not hard to find. Um, what are the health benefits of kombucha? We are in a time when the word probiotic is commonly used, and gut health is, the, is of the utmost importance. Did you know that balancing the, and the, the healthy bacteria in your gut can potentially help strengthen your immune system, lower inflammation in the body, balance hormones, and even fight depression and anxiety? I'm just trying to get you an answer for Sharon and an answer for you guys. You guys have to decide. I, I actually drink it. They've got about, oh, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 flavors, and there's some I like, some I don't like. And I don't drink it with any regularity. I would say that it's in the refrigerator and maybe it's a really hot day and I've had a really good workout. And I say, all right, I'm going to have a kombucha. Uh, during the fermentation process, kombucha naturally produces gut-friendly probiotics, active enzyme, enzymes, organic acids, and detoxifiers. All of these beneficial byproducts are also present in other, in other fermented foods like kimchi, yogurt, uh, kefir, and miso. By the way, it's K E F I R. <coughs> Most Americans pronounce it either kefir or kefir. It's pronounced kefir. Um, um, so anyway, it goes on to say that it has a national, a natural effervescence, uh, many delicious flavors to choose from, and a signature bite that feels very healthy and revitalizing. Um, Real kombucha will not only have some SCOBY, that stands for mother strands or mother, at the bottom of the bottle it might also have a, a slight tangy taste and smell. Don't be alarmed. These are signs of a successful fermentation. For the, fermentation. For the Western world, the kombucha craze has only just begun, uh, and the good news is it can be consumed with or without yoga pants. And then it's either, even got how authentic kombucha is brewed, and it takes you through the uh, the five steps. Um, but anyway, that was if you happen to be getting on a United Airlines flight, grab the uh, September issue of Hemispheres. This is a, it's a full page ad, but I give you a little bit of information. You decide whether or not it is your bag. Uh, I'm sitting here looking at my notes. I've talked about the Bowls Cafe. Talked about going to Masterpiece Bake Shop, uh, Cake Shop this week, and seeing Buddy Jack Phillips over there supporting him, that wonderful principled man, and getting some cookies and a piece of cake. Uh, I talked about uh, the Salute Barn Grill in Colorado Springs. I want to mention John Holly's Asian Bistro in Lone Tree. It's on Park Meadows Drive, and my daughter, when visiting, she's visiting from Mexico. She never gets close to Colorado without saying, let's go see John. His name is John Yee, but the restaurant's called John Holly's Asian Bistro. He and his brother, Mike. Mike runs it for him. John's got about five places. But he's up every morning at 4 o'clock. He goes down to the fresh fish market. And, man, when he brings back the sashimi and makes some of the sushi and some of the dragon rolls. So we went for lunch this week. And, and by the way, there's a server over there named Robert. <laughs> Robert's a, a good old gringo, and uh, uh, as opposed to they have a lot of different people there at the restaurant. That's fine. I'm happy with all of that. But Robert, he used to work at the Pan Asia Bistro. Remember that when it was on I-25? Um, and he's been with John ever since Pan Asia Bistro left, which has probably been five, six, seven, eight years ago now, and he does a wonderful job. If you go to John Holly's, ask for Robert. I always start out with the hot and sour soup. We had some edamame. Uh, I, uh, in addition to the dragon roll and some of the sashimi, we eat like pigs when we go there. We absolutely do. Um, they're starting to do poke bowls. And so I had one of the poke bowls with uh, the tuna 
very, very good. You're not going to get a bad meal at John Holly's Asian Bistro. Gosh, if you haven't been in the place, we were there on Tuesday and uh, for lunch and uh, got there about noon. It was rocking. He does such a wonderful job, and uh, uh, we really enjoyed it. All right, let me talk about let me talk about a couple of books. Um, a few weeks ago, I got a call from a listener. Uh, said that he had gone to see the movie. It came out at the end of August, Operation Finale, and it is about the Israeli capture and transport to Israel from Argentina of the architect of the Holocaust. Now, you can say it was Hitler, you can say it was Goring, you can say, but the guy that carried it out was Adolf Eichmann, E-I-C-H-M-A-N, N, two N's. And uh, he said it was really, asked if I had seen it. No, he said it was really a good movie. It was two hours long, um, and it was about Eichmann being discovered hiding in Argentina 15 years after the end of World War II. And um, the Israelis went down and got him. And they uh, took him back to Israel and they tried him and they hanged him. They uh, cremated him and then spread his ashes in the Mediterranean Sea out after, past the international waters barrier because they didn't want there to be, there didn't want to be any memorial to this man and to what he had done. And he, by his own admission, said, yeah, five million Jews, maybe six million Jews. The guy was a pig. But at any rate, so another listener called up and said, you ought to read the book Hunting Eichmann. Because, you know, the movie was two hours. So it starts in Argentina, ends in Argentina. Um, they give you a little bit of the, uh, the preface. They give you a little bit of the epilogue. But that's what... That's where the adventure is. So this listener suggested I get the book Hunting Eichmann. It's by Neil Bascom, B-A-S-C-O-M-B. How a band of survivors of the Holocaust and a young spy agency, that would be the Mossad, Mossad, chased down the world's most notorious Nazi. And the book um, obviously doesn't have to do it in two hours. It can do it in, in this case, 327 pages. And it talks about the war. It talks about the extermination camps. Um, it talks about, um, um, and I realize it might be a little grisly for some of you, but you know what? It happened, and it was life. I know that there's some screwballs out there that deny it. There's screwballs out there that think that the earth is flat. But anyway, and it talks about how we got away with the help, in many cases, of the church and priests and so forth and so on, forged documents, wound up in Argentina, eventually was able to get his wife there, able to get his sons there, and uh, how these um, agencies that hunt down Nazis, sure, you know, we know a lot of them were tried at Nuremberg and sentenced to prison or sentenced to death, but there were a lot of them that got away, don't kid yourself, and a lot of them went into German government and so forth and so on, so but anyway, it takes you through the process of identifying him and how they put together the operation and how they went down there and how they got him and how they transferred him back. So to the listener that said they saw the movie, thank you. I went and saw the movie. I read the book. Thank you to the uh, listener who recommended the book. It was fabulous. I'm, I'm telling you, and I, I just think that it reads like a novel. I'm telling you, it reads like a Ludlum spy thriller. And so if you want to read a good book and yet get something out of it other than just relaxation and entertainment, learn a little bit of something, I'd suggest it, Hunting uh, Eichmann by uh, Neil Bascom. Another listener very nicely at a recent event brought me a book, and I'm going to interview the guy tomorrow. You're going to hear it here coming up pretty soon. James Donovan, A Terrible Glory, Custer and the Little Bighorn, The Last Great Battle, of the American West. Now, I know that most of you are saying, okay, the Indians won and the Cavalry lost. We know what happened. But this book is about, uh, and, and by the way, let me go back to Hunting Eichmann because it's 327 pages long. 
but there's almost a hundred pages of notes and bibliography and interviews and primary sources and so forth. That ought to tell you something about the work that Neil Baskin did. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about James Donovan and wrap it up on the Mike Boyle Restaurant Show when we come back. <laughs> 